In this lecture, we will briefly explain what URL encoding is and why it is necessary. Take a look at a typical URL syntax on your screen. A typical syntax will contain a URL path with a scheme like HTTP, and then it'll contain several parameters and values. This whole URL can then be sent using the HTTP GET or the HTTP POST. But just by looking at the syntax, we know that not all text can be sent as it is. The values cannot, for example, contain spaces. The URL syntax, as you can see, already treats question mark and equal to as special characters. So these special characters and space would have to be encoded into a certain format before the URL can be constructed and then sent over the internet. That's where the URL encoding scheme comes into the play. Anytime you create a URL, the parameter values must be URL encoded and then used in the URL string. The same is true of the parameter names, but the parameter names are usually fixed, but the values are more dynamic. Here's an example of the text that we want to send as part of a URL. When this text goes through the URL encode algorithm, it comes out as the following encoded text. You can see the space, the question mark, and equal to getting encoded. In a similar way, the encoded text can be decoded by using the URL decode algorithm. So when the URL is sent to a web server, for example, the web server or the application should decode this to get the original text back. It's important to understand that this is not encryption. The intention here is not to encrypt the data, but rather transform it so that it can be sent as part of the URL. There's some example of the transformation that you can see on the screen. For example, the space, the question mark, or equal to are being changed. In a similar way, other special characters are also changed. With this brief lecture about the URL encoding, let's go to the next lecture to talk about base64 encoding.